Hey guys, Philip here from Science and Theology in Apposition, and I'm coming to you today to share a little bit about the ESV Study Bible. Now this Bible has been really popular, especially among uh, Reformed guys. It was written by a lot of Reformed people, uh, people who hold to the Reformed theology. And the ESV is one of their favorite trans, uh, translations, and this study Bible is really great. And so I want to kind of give you a hands-on with it so you can see some of the features without just looking at the PDFs online. Uh, I hope it will be real beneficial to you. So how would I describe the ESV study Bible? Well, scholarly is one word that comes to mind, but also I think the ESV is a great translation, and it comes with a number of of different uh, options and features and you can get the hardback or the leather bounds and a bunch of different options like that but on the inside what is it really like and so the best description I could come up with to try to convey this idea to you is um, well it's kinda like this imagine taking the portable seminary which if you don't have this book it basically consists of a summary of a lot of the stuff you've learned in seminary and condenses it down so take some good articles out of this, condense it down, add it into the ESV Study Bible. And then take a work like this one, Introduction to the Bible by Geisler, which tells you about canonization and different manuscripts and some translation and different things like that about how we got our Bible. Add that in. Um, this book, Manners and Customs, tells you about the cultural milieu of the time. Add some flavor of that. Uh, this work here, Treasures from the Original, little tidbits from the original biblical languages, which you'll find in the ESV Study Bible. Of course, you'll find stuff that would be in an Old Testament survey, like this one, book introductions, authors, dates, times, controversies. Uh, that includes a New Testament introduction as well to the, to the New Testament. And then after all that, you have the articles at the end. Well, you also have the biblical text, so let's add in the biblical text. Then you have the articles at the end which talk about things like Christian ethics and also you have a great overview of theology. So add in a good basic theology book. Then add in an atlas, Bible maps, really good quality Bible maps I think. And of course then you have different terms throughout that are defined like in a, in a Bible dictionary. And of course you have a little concordance at the end, of course it's not this exhaustive. So take all those things, put them in a blender, and once you do that, you'll have a giant, great resource that takes different parts of all this stuff and combines it into your Bible study. And that's kind of what the ESV Study Bible is like. Let's take a look inside. Okay, so here we have the ESV uh, hardback edition itself, and you can see there's no uh, bookmark like there is with the HCSB Study Bible. And um, I want to give you kind of a size comparison. A lot of people rag on the ESV for being very thick and heavy and hard to carry and all that. So here's a comparison between the NLT, which a lot of you probably have and enjoy. <clears throat> as well as the HCSB and the ESV. So you can see their relative thicknesses here. You can see how the NLT compares with the ESV. A little thinner the NLT is. But otherwise it's almost the same dimensions. Okay, so there's less pages in the NLT altogether. But one feature I like about the ESV is these other study Bibles, well, some other study Bibles, like the NLT here, it's all uh, black and white, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but, uh, you know, there's just uh, aesthetic appeal about having the colors in there. Um, this NLT, of course, has the words of Christ in red, and you won't find that in the ESV which was one of the main complaints about the ESV. Words of Christ are not in red. However, once you look at some other study Bibles, uh, Words of Christ in red, and there's passages that are kind of disputed as to whether Christ spoke them or not, John 3.16 kind of thing, 
which I was surprised to learn about. But anyway, you know, how do you know for sure what's put in red? And does that emphasize Christ's words more than the rest of the Bible? There's the whole issue there anyway. Um, <clears throat> so the ISV has color. It uh, uses these colored figures. And um, it, it has a pretty good use of color. The, uh, the pages, I would say, when you look at a passage, for instance, if you just opened it up and looked, you would not find it as aesthetically pleasing, I think, as the HCSB Study Bible, which is uh, one thing to consider for sure. The HCSB really makes you want to stay and look at it and read over it, whereas um, you don't get quite that same aesthetic appeal with this Bible. Um, anyway, we'll take time to go through all the different features that are in here. I just wanted to mention about the color. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. So that's the ESV. The ESV, you know, I'd have to say that as far as the hardback and the way it looks with the giant letters, you know, if you're attending a King James only type church, you definitely wouldn't be able to show up with a Bible that pronounces its version quite like that, but you know, find a nice Bible case. Um, also comes in some other editions. For instance, I have the the uh, True Tone, and this is the Forest Tan Trail design. Here's the box that it came in. Some people are really into how things are packaged. Um, that's the box it came in, anyway. So this is the the forest tan, and it has a it has the marker gold edges, same thickness, nearly the same weight, uh, all the same features. If the weight is an issue and the thickness is an issue for you, I've uh, just learned that they've that they're planning on releasing in early 2011 a personal edition, which is supposed to be smaller and takes out a lot of the extra articles, but leaves in most of the scripture commentary itself. Um, which might be a good good thing for you if you're worried about the size. So let's take a more detailed look inside. When you first crack it open, you got the customary blank pages. Presented to by date, marriages, births, deaths, splash screen if you will. <laughs> Immediately we come to the copyright page and table of contents. So you can see some of the color there. List of abbreviations, introduction. So the introduction here will tell you a lot about the translation uh, philosophy, just like the HCSB had the optimal equivalence. Uh, this Bible uses what's known as essentially, essentially literal translation philosophy. And I think that is definitely a good thing, but you know, that's the ESV translation, so we're just looking mostly at the study Bible today. Here's a list of contributors. A lot of contributors, a lot of scholars that worked on this. You'll notice most of them are from the Reformed bent, although that's not always the case. And I think this study Bible does a good job of balancing the uh, theological spectrum, if you will. Now, I know it's got a lot of people upset at it for being too reformed in the way it presents theology and comments on stuff, but I think it's really fair, especially when you look at Revelation. It uh, lists out all these different positions and does a really good job of being pretty impartial at that section, I think. Here we have the overview of the Bible, a survey of the history of salvation. So one thing with the ES, uh, ESV Study Bible is it takes you through the history of salvation. So it gives you little sections along the way as you're going in the book introductions about how salvation is, uh, what's the best way to say it? How all, how God's accomplishing the redemption of mankind plays out through the entire Bible as one of the main systematic topics throughout the Bible. And so it really highlights that includes a little introductory article about what that means at the beginning and then at the end in the articles section 
you can find all the passages that talk about the history of salvation. So, Old Testament. Theology of the Old Testament. Relatively short article. Old Testament timeline and overview of the different uh, activities that happened and the dates in the Old Testament. The date of the Exodus. This is one of those very helpful articles, just like uh, the date of the crucifixion and those sort of things, to try to see, since there's the two main uh, theories about the date, the early date and the later date, and it gives you a list of you know, why people hold this view of the early date and why people hold this view of the later date and that the ESV includes uh, both dates whenever it talks about the Exodus, if you like the early or the late. Hebrew calendar compared to the Gregorian or modern calendar. So you can line up, you know, the months that are given in the Old Testament with the Gregorian months or the months that we have now. Introduction to the Pentateuch how to treat it as literature, etc. Introduction to Genesis. Now, I'm pretty sure you can find a lot of good stuff about most of this online in the PDFs and whatnot, but this just kind of gives you a flavor of what's included. Place in the Pentateuch, arrangement of the book, kind of an outline of how it works, genealogies of Genesis, some of the main characters and the patriarchs and whatnot, the main theme, the key themes, History of Salvation Summary, that's like I was talking earlier. Genesis and History. Genesis and Science. That one keeps going. Reading Genesis in the 21st Century, definitely something good to include there. Here's a map of the area. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Uh, literary features, and then an outline. Now you've probably already noticed this is a lot of introduction material. And, of course, you know, with Genesis, there's tons of stuff you could say. So, uh, it's definitely appropriate to get as many thoughts in there as you can, especially if you're in a study Bible. And, you know, it's like I said before, when you take all those books and put them together, you kind of get this study Bible. Of course, I was being a little facetious there, but you really do get a lot of flavors of a lot of different resources, which makes this great, especially if you're in an area where you don't have access to a lot of resources on the mission field and whatnot. Okay, so here's the first uh, page of Genesis here, the first two verses, and all the commentary about the first two verses. You'll notice that it uses a one-column style, one column of text, and then on the right or on the left is the uh, cross-references. So normally about half a page of text, half a page of commentary. Okay, here's another map. The Garden of Eden, where was it located? Here's the Tigris River and the Fertile Crescent and all that kind of business. So it really provides you with a lot of tools that you can use in order to uh, really study the Bible. Okay, I skipped ahead a little. Here's a larger map that almost takes up a whole page. It says the Battle of the Valley of Siddim, circa... 2085 BC, when five Canaanite cities rebelled against their Mesopotamian overlords, yada yada yada, and it shows you where the battles took place. Good feature to have in the middle of the text. The HCSB study Bible does that as well. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is this is a Smythe sewn binding. I believe you pronounce it Smythe. Anyway, that's a really good feature, meaning when you open it up on a table, it lays flat and you don't have pages constantly trying to go the other ways. Um, and it's supposed to last a long time and not break down as you continually use it. My uh, exhaustive Strongest Strongs is a Smythe Zone binding as well, and that's a feature I really love with that work. So that shows you Genesis. Here's Exodus. And you get the same type stuff, good map, introduction. I like the colors that they used in these maps. However, the colors on the pages and stuff, this is kind of a drab olive color. And it doesn't catch your eye nearly as well, I think, as the HCSB does with its gold, gold bars. You know, and it has the blue verse numbers in contrast to the black text, which really give this kind of a fresh approach every time you come to it, I think. Um, you know, like I said, that's just aesthetics. Everybody has their own preferences.